So if you got a Bible, go to 1 Kings 17. And Ryan's going to hang out up here with me. We're going to tag team this, kind of sing and preach together. And uh, we're going to start a series. This is kind of a preview to the series. Next week, I'll really kick it off. But it's a series called Prophets. Everybody say Prophets. We're going to go through the prophets in the Bible. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Nahum, Habakkuk, Micah, Zechariah. We're going to get into some of the prophets that didn't write a book, but prophets like Elijah and Elisha. And we're going to study what that has to do with our lives today. But I really want to kick off with Elijah the prophet, 1 Kings 17. And I want to invite Ryan up here real fast just to share uh, uh, his story. Because some of y'all are like, how did he get into this? And what does that actually look like singing on the streets? Yeah, so Pastor Paul mentioned I've served a local church for about 15 years in the place of worship ministry. Such an honor and delight of my heart to do that. But on the backside of COVID, um, I feel like that we stepped into God's idea. So before, I felt like it was many times, many years of my life where I said, God, here's what I'm feeling. I'm thinking, can you bless it? And God honored it was for for his glory. But this particular particular calling and what I feel like he's doing in this season is we've stepped into his his thing and uh, we just felt compelled by the spirit of God to go into uncommon places out of curiosity the curiosity of our heart said man what if we lift up Jesus in the subways in Mardi Gras at the Grammys what would happen and we did that out of curiosity, and God has blown our minds. It's been absolutely incredible. So many supernatural stories, so many supernatural testimonies beginning to, uh, to flood uh, this season of our lives. So tell excited. them one of the stories. Just tell them one. Yeah, we'll, man. We'll kick it so, off with one story. Yeah, yeah, So we went to L.A., and we said, man, we're going to set right, upside, or right outside the Grammys, uh, right, right outside a cryptocurrency center. And uh, we set out there. Sam Smith was doing his stuff inside the arena. Very demonic, very crazy. And outside the arena, they were met by the true, authentic presence of God. Come on. Here's the crazy part. So guys with Grammy medallions around their neck, just won Grammys that night. One guy in particular stopped for about 30 minutes and was arrested in the presence of the Lord and could not stop weeping. Said, man, I don't know what this is, but I've never felt music like this before. I said, bro, it ain't the music. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost, baby. And so, man, it, it, the Lord did so much. Then I had another guy, I didn't even tell you this, that same night texted me or actually messaged me online about three or four weeks later. Says, man, I was sitting at the the restaurant right beside what you were doing at the Grammys there, and I could not stop crying. I sat with you in worship for probably an hour, and uh, he was from the music group, the Pentatonics. I don't know if anybody's Yeah, Pentatonics, yeah. yeah. And come on, get them, Holy Ghost. Come on. <laughs> come on, Jesus. Y'all, we're going to talk about the uncanny provision of God that God provides in wild ways. And if you don't know how to write it, the word is on the screen. It's a tough word for me to write. I was trying to figure out how to write that, but note takers are history makers. And I love the story of Ryan because it connects with the story I'm about to preach on from 1 Kings 17. It's the uncanny way of God. It's how God won't fit in the box that religious people oftentimes try to put him in, that God is going to break your religious box on how you think he's going to show up, what he's going to do, who he's going to speak through, how he provides. So in 1 Kings 17, we meet this guy named Elijah, and Elijah the Tishabite from Tishbe and Gilead goes to King Ahab. Who is this guy? We've never heard of him yet. The Bible had not introduced who Elijah was, but out of the blue, he just shows up and starts talking to the king. And King Ahab was a wicked king, the most wicked king Israel had ever seen. He married a woman named Jezebel. And Queen Jezebel and King Ahab, they ushered in so many false gods and just really wicked sins into the nation of Israel. And Israel had been worshiping these false gods. One of them was Baal, and they would bow down to Baal. They would offer sacrifices, children sacrifices. And Elijah says, enough is enough. And he goes to the king. He says, as surely as the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. One word shut down the entire weather system for a whole nation. One word shut down a whole nation. 
And I think about how even during 2020, one little virus shut down an entire system. It shut down the nation. It shut down nations around the world that all it takes is one small thing. One little thing can, can break everything. One little word can change everything. All it takes is one word to stop what God's wanting to do. But also all it takes is one word to start what God wants to do. All it takes is one word to change the atmosphere. All it takes is one name to speak that changes everything. Ryan, sing about that name. Just say this. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Know how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. I know. Oh, I know. Speak the name of Jesus, it changes everything. Oh, it shifts the atmosphere. Yeah. It changes oh, marriages. It changes families. It, it changes the outcome of a problem. It Just the name of the Jesus. Sweetest name. Oh, I know. You have no rival. You have no evil. Come on, church, sing it out. Now and forever. There's no greater name. No higher name. One name. Because yours is the king. His name is higher. Yours is the. Yeah. Yours is the name above all names. Just speak the name. You have no rival. Oh, Jesus. You have no. on how many y'all feel the presence of God here because there is power in the name of Jesus when you speak his name things have there to change there is power in the name of Jesus we prophesy over this city there is power over this in church. the name of Jesus the rain can be changed there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is. There is power in the name of Jesus. At the mention of your name, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Ryan, talk about how when you go into the streets and you sing this. Yeah, come on, give God praise. When you sing this, you have faced some crazy stuff. You've walked into some wild areas like Mardi Gras. Tell them what happens when you begin to sing about the name of Jesus. Yeah, so when I go out and begin to sing about the name of Jesus, stuff starts getting stirred up. And the principalities of the air do not like it. We were just down in Union Square Park uh, about a month ago, and we started singing about the name of Jesus. And everywhere I go, I start, I lead off with that, just explicitly clear. Hey, man, we are ambassador, uh, ambassadors of Christ. And as I step into that, there was a demoniac that started manifesting. And Pastor Paul, he would come up, he'd try to throw a drink at us, he started swatting at us. I mean, real stuff was starting to happen. 
But every time that he would get super bold and he would start going for it, we would look back at him and just say, man, let me tell you something, that there is power in the name of Jesus. No matter what you do, there is power in the one name, in the only name, in the one only true and living God. There's power, supernatural power. Hey, 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 to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Then we'd lay hands on him and we would cast that demon out of him and he was free and whole under the power of the only one and true living God, Jesus. Hey! Come on, Jesus. Hey! Somebody Hallelujah. say there's power. There is power. There's power in his name. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church, right there. There is power. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power. In the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. So Elijah speaks the word, and when he speaks the word, things shift in the nation. This word was sent to wake the nation up. This word was sent to shake the nation out of their complacency. They had been worshiping false gods, and Elijah said, the rain is going to stop at my word, and it won't start again until I speak again. Be careful what you prophesy, because sometimes you become the victim of your own prophecy. This, this, this was the word from God sent to bring the nation to repentance so that they could receive the refreshing of God. This was not meant to try to kill the nation. It was meant to save the nation. Sometimes we think a problem is sent into our life to try to kill us when actually God says, I'm going to use that problem to actually save you. I'm trying to save your marriage. I'm trying to save your family. I'm trying to save you from something that could be worse. So Elijah says, it won't start again until I speak. But now he finds himself in a drought and he has nothing to eat and nowhere to drink. And so he's rethinking that prophecy. The word of the Lord comes to him again and says, leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. This was a long walk. He would walk through a desert area. I was just there a couple days ago in Israel and he would walk a long journey to get to this place. And then God says, you will drink from the brook and I have been talking to the ravens. What? What? Wait, I was with them until we got to that part. God says, I've been speaking to the ravens lately, and I've told them to supply you with food there. Y'all, can we just take a moment to acknowledge that's kind of crazy, that's kind of uncanny, that's kind of weird, but God will use anything and anyone to bring what he needs to bring to the people he needs to bring it to, and he won't fit in our boxes. And by the way, ravens, those are not pretty birds. Pretty bird. It's not a pretty bird. It's not a nice parrot. It's not a nice little birdie. Ravens are dirty birds. God was talking to some dirty birds. And he says, I'm going to use some dirty birds to feed you, Elijah. I'm so thankful God uses dirty birds too. Don't act like you're a clean bird all the time. You've been a little dirty too. But here's the point. God will use anyone and anything. He uses Jacob and Isaac and Abraham and Peter. He's going to build his church through some dirty birds. He's going to build his church through some uncanny people. He's going to use people like uh, uh, David and Solomon and Samson and Ruth and Deborah and Thomas and Matthew the tax collector and Saul the terrorist who was flipped into Paul the apostle. God will use some dirty birds to get his food into the world to bring the gospel message. God will use anything and anyone. But I love that God tells Elijah, go there and I'll provide for you in an uncanny way. God always is faithful. Would you sing about the faithfulness, Ryan, of God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have been so good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a
God says, Elijah, I'm going to provide for you. And he goes and he does exactly what the Lord told him to do. And he goes to the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and he stays there. Stay where God tells you to stay. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning. Have you ever been surprised by how God provides for you? Have you ever been surprised by the way God uses? Like Ryan, you've You've been out on the streets and you left behind a a job where you had a salary and you were paid to do what you did, but you had to trust God after you stepped down from that. How has God provided for you out on the streets just singing to people? Yeah, it it has been supernatural provision of the Lord. Um, We've only been doing this now for about 10 months around there Um, and probably the first five to six months uh, the Holy Spirit has started putting it on people's heart, whether it be ministries, whether it be people that come up to us on the street. And within about a five to seven month span, the Lord gave the ministry $70,000 completely unsolicited. We haven't asked anybody for a penny, but God has said, man, I'll meet the need. This is my heart. This is what I'm doing. I'll meet the need. And we're going to help sow into your ministry today. But listen. Tell them about how God has connected you to some unique, interesting people through social media. You were talking about how just out of the blue, someone like Kardashian just reaching out, just the the uncanny ways of God. Yeah. So again, saints, remember my context. I'm a church kid, like love the house of God. My dad was a pastor for years and uh, never thought that I would be engaging with these type of people. But Khloe Kardashian has been engaging on our post and and it's been very explicitly Jesus on the post like I'm speaking in tongues over somebody type of post and like she's like engaging with that because there's been a seed planted in all of these people Uh, God's opened up a door we're talking and having conversation with a gentleman named Tyrese he uh he's been in some of the Fast and Furious movies and God's doing some crazy stuff in him and he's like sharing your stuff with people all around Hollywood like you've got to hear this guy yeah, put, putting it online and, and sharing it and, and doing that whole thing and talking to him about even maybe doing some collaborative stuff because the Holy Spirit is stirring him in a real, real special way. He was on the a big popular like podcast breakfast morning show uh, a couple weeks ago and like started speaking in tongues over people and like prophesying. This is Tyrese. And Come so God on, is Jesus. doing something so significant in Tyrese. And then he's connecting us with others in L.A. and Hollywood. Yeah, so it's been really wild. God will use anyone and anything and any means to do what he wants to do. You know, this past week we were in Israel and we stopped in Nazareth. And the bus driver said, all right, everybody's on your own to go get lunch. But don't expect to find anything good in Nazareth. And I was like, hold up, wait a minute. And I said, that's a scripture. And he goes, I know, it's a Bible joke. Uh, They would say nothing good comes from Nazareth. That was the the phrase until God sends Jesus through a dirty town like Nazareth. And God will surprise us on what he does and how he does it, where he does it. I said, is there any good coffee here? He goes, no, there's no good coffee here. He's like, the best coffee is probably in Tel Aviv. This place does not have good coffee. Well, I go walking down the street. I found the best coffee in Israel was right there in Nazareth. The uncanny provision of God. But what I'm trying to say is Ryan's story is interesting because sometimes we doubt how God's going to provide. We question how God's going to come through. And we live with this feeling of, I don't know how he's going to do it. But if we will trust him, Elijah just trusted him, and the birds brought food every morning. 
His mercy is new every morning. The goodness of God, his grace is sufficient for you. And he drinks from the brook and it was enough. God is enough. Jira, Jehovah, Jira, God is enough. Will you sing that, Ryan? Jira, you are enough. Jira, you are enough. I will be content in every circumstance. Jira, you are enough. Oh, forever enough, always enough, more than enough. How many believe that this morning? He's forever enough. Always enough, more than enough, yeah. Forever enough, always enough, more than enough, yeah, 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 yeah. Forever enough, always enough, more than enough. Church, you're already loved, you're already chosen. I know, I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. Come on, receive it today. You're already loved. Somebody who's in a dry place. More than I could imagine. Somebody who's in, been a drought. Season. And that is enough. God says, I'm going to show up for you. I'm going to show up for you. I'm going to provide for you. You're already loved. He loves you. You're already chosen. He's with you. You know who you are. Remember what he's spoken. You're already loved more than you can imagine. And that is enough. Oh, that is enough. Jesus said in Matthew 6 21, he says, Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry. He says, look at the birds. Look at the dirty birds. Look at the sparrows. Your heavenly father sees what you need. He knows what you're facing. It may not be a financial need. Maybe you're in a dry season spiritually. Maybe you find yourself in a dry season in your marriage. Maybe you find yourself in a dry season relationally. You're just going, God, I feel like I've been in a famine. Like, where are my friends? Where is the future? Where's the dreams? And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I just feel like God, God's going to meet your needs in that dry season. If he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, how much more, how much more will he love if he dread watches over every sparrow, every sparrow, how much more will he love how much more will he love? If he, just, if he dresses the lily with beauty and splendor, how much more will he love you? How much more will he if love you? If he watches over, if he watches over every sparrow, every sparrow, I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. Church, He watches over you. He's your provider. He's your protector. He's got you. He'll use ravens. He'll use a creek. He'll use a pastor in Tulsa, Oklahoma named Paul. He'll use a friend in your life. God knows how to get you where he's got you and get to you what you need. He is the ultimate need meter. But don't mistake the supply with the source. Don't let the supply become the source. 
Because sometimes the supply changes. Sometimes the supply runs dry. And in verse 7, it says, sometime later, the brook dried up. Now, God led him to a place where he would be fed, but then the brook dries up because there had been no rain in the land. And Elijah was like, who prophesied about there being no rain? Oh, yeah, that was me. My bad. Then he's, he's finding himself in a dry place, and the word of the Lord comes to him and says, go at once to Zarephath. This was the hometown of Jezebel. God says, I want you to go to a hard place. I want you to go into a, a difficult place. I want you to go to the streets of Mardi Gras. I want you to go to Los... I want you to go into those interesting places. And I'm going to connect you with people who have needs. Now, you have a need, and they have a need. And I'm going to get right... God is in the business of connecting needy people to each other. And we, the truth is, we all have needs. Any needy people in the room today? Who's the more needy spouse between you and him? You're just lifting his hand up, lifting her hand up. How many of y'all got some needy kids? We got some needy kids. We got five bellies to feed. A lot of attention, a lot of needs, a lot of love, a lot of... I'm a needy person. But God's in the business of connecting needy people. And he says, Elijah, you have a need, but I want you to go to a widow. Your brook is drying up, but her son is dying. She's lost everything. She, she feels like she's down to nothing. You feel like you're down to nothing. And I'm going to meet you in the middle. God's going to get right between you and the other. God's grace is sufficient for you. So he sends Elijah. He says, I'm sending you to a widow. And I want you to go there. And the widow is going to supply you with food. So he goes to Zarephath. When he comes to the town gate, the widow was right there gathering sticks. And he calls and he asks, would you give me a cup of water to drink? And as she was going to get a cup of water, by the way, she does not believe in the same God as him. This was a pagan town, not an Israelite town. They were not Hebrew people there. And as she's going to get water, she recognizes he's an Israelite. And then he says, also, could I get some bread too? Now, this was asking too much. Now, she turns around. She goes, I swear to God. These were her words. Don't get mad at me. Email the Bible. Direct message to the Bible. She goes, I swear to the God you believe in, not my God. She says, I got nothing. I got no bread. How dare you ask me for food? She says, the problem is we're in a famine because some prophet a couple years ago prophesied there'd be no rain. So here I am gathering sticks. You, matter of fact, you caught me making my final meal for me and my son. He's about to die. Who was that prophet that prophesied that? Elijah's like, Seabass? I don't know. Put it on his, I, my bad, you know. He's like, it was me. The problem was the prophet and the prophet was the problem. But what if the problem was actually in disguise the answer? What if the person that was asking her to do something that she felt like she couldn't do because of the predicament she was in, because of what he had to say, was actually the answer to her problem. What if God disguised a problem, disguised a prophet as a problem? What if God sent you a prophetic word, but through a problem, a circumstance, a situation, hidden in plain sight, she's staring at the situation, and he's staring at the situation, and the answer to both of their problems is connected to each other, but it requires trust in God. He has to trust that this widow can provide for him, even though she says, I'm down to nothing. She has to trust that if she gives him this meal, somehow she's going to have enough. Elijah looks at her and he says, don't be afraid. Don't you worry. Fear not. Go and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and make something for yourself and your son, for this is the word of the Lord for you. This is the word of the Lord for you. Somebody say, this is the word of the Lord for me. This is the word of the Lord for me. God says, the jar of flour in your house will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. In other words, Elijah says, God's going to meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You won't run out. Somebody say, I won't run out. I'm not going to run out. Ryan, would you just speak a little bit on that in your own journey and sing it out to the people too? Y'all, this is an experimental message, so bear with us as we're navigating this prophetic message together. But I feel like, Ryan, God wants to speak through you right now in this moment to the church. Yeah. Hallelujah.
You will never run out Cause he is your source No matter what's in front of you He is your source So take your eyes off everything around you. Just look up to Jesus. Just look up to him. Look up to the Lord. Oh, look up to the Lord. There's no other answer but Him. There's no other answer but Him. Look up to the Lord. Look up to the Lord. There's no other answer by him. There's no other answer by him. So look up to the Lord. Ryan, was there ever a moment when you had to do this? You were saying in the last service how one, one moment you were out on the streets and there were witches just trying to throw curses and spells on you. There were people trying to attack your keyboardist. And you really had to just stand when it was hard to stand. You had to worship when it was hard to worship and trust God, to look to God when you were maybe afraid. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know, we were in Mardi Gras, the story that he's referencing there. And uh, we were on Bourbon Street the last night of the culmination of the celebration. It's a Saturday night. And Bourbon Street was just packed wall to wall with people. It honestly was the wildest environment that I've ever been in my life. And we set up on a little street corner and we're just lifting praise up to the Lord. And this gentleman was on something, was intoxicated on a drug or alcohol or something and came up and was, was interacting with us fine initially and then he lost his balance and was about to fall and my keyboard guy just was going to brace him so he wouldn't fall and, and hurt himself and when my keyboard guy touched him, this guy went into a fit of rage and started swinging on him and, and almost caught him in the, in the face and um, and, and these other two gentlemen came up. Cause man, I, I, I wasn't raised like that. So, you know, I ain't gonna front. I, I was backing up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, snap. It's about to get real up in here. And these other guys came and they flashed their gun. And I'm like, oh, snap. Like, we're, we're really up in here doing this. Wow. And... Um, and before they could say anything, it was like the Lord, the peace of God came over me. It was, it was really, really strange. I honestly have never experienced anything like that. One minute, it was pretty intense fear, like, oh, man, what's about to happen? The next minute, it was like the Lord was showing me, you know, I've sent these guys to help. And they get up in this guy. He was on, we believe he was on methamphetamine, which I don't know if you ever fought somebody that's on drugs. I mean, you can hit them 20 times and they still go, go crazy at you. And uh, so, so these guys get up in his face and get nose to nose with him and they say, hey man, you want a bullet? And I'm like, whoa, a bullet, that's a little harsh. But, but anyways, it got his attention and he backed up and these guys said, hey, we're gonna come, we're just gonna stay here the rest of the night and make sure you guys are okay. And then really quick, the same night, uh, Smarty Crawl and if you've ever been to New Orleans, super just heavy uh, spiritual climate. And witches were coming up all throughout the night and throwing these beads at our feet and trying to cast spells and all this kind of stuff. And, 
And we, uh, yeah, when all that stuff's going on, you're, you're just trying to process it, especially if that's not been your environment. Like, God, what is happening right now? And there's level of, of nervousness and things that come on you because, again, in the church, uh, if I'm just being completely honest, we, we can stand up here and say bold stuff all day. And we got our security team behind us. You know what I'm saying? But when, when, when you're out there, um, like there, we don't carry security guys with us, just people that pray <laughs> and love Jesus. And, and so, and really that's, that's what we do too. And, and so, yeah, they're, they're out there and, and these guys, they don't know when they're manifesting and when they're not. They, like the demoniac the other day, he didn't have a clue what he was doing. He was, in a, he was caught up in a trance. And uh, this huge guy, and he's sitting there in my face, nose to nose, saying, I know who you are, and I've come to kill you. Mm. And, um, yeah, when somebody twice your size is saying all that, and you don't have any protection around you, um, you get nervous for a second, and then you say, okay, God, either I believe this or I don't. Like, either you're all I have, and you're going to protect me, and you're going to provide, and you're going to meet our need right now. Or, or, I don't know, and, and every time, church, I've seen the Lord over the last year in these hostile environments come in and not only diffuse the, the atmosphere, but, but change the individual's heart. Because that's the thing. It's like, man, we're not, yeah, we're not just trying to push you away and say, oh, go away. No, but we, we've come for you. We've come for you. Even in the midst of your craziness, even in the midst of, of what's going on in your mind and, and, and everything you're processing through in life, like we understand that the rage is just the byproduct, the heart condition. And we've come to minister to the heart. And we've come to set the captive free. But the Spirit of the Lord is, and I feel the Spirit of the Lord right now, where the Spirit of the Lord is, church, I've watched this in real time happen. We just say, come, Holy Spirit. And we just say, oh, man, we feel you, God, but we need you more. We need you more in this moment, or, or we might not be here tomorrow. Like, would you come, Holy Spirit? Would you increase your presence among us right now? So this demoniac, this guy that, that has no clue of who you are, that he would feel you, that he would be transformed in this moment. And uh, yeah, so he's been a shield about us. Come on. He's been our protector. Never would have made it. Never would have made it. Man, this is my story for real, for real. For real, for real, for real. I don't know about you guys in here, but man, I've been, I've been so stirred by the story of David right now and, and, and how he was ushering the ark back into the city. And he said, man, I am not going to give God a dignified praise, but I'm gonna give him an undignified praise because I've watched God time and time and time and time again in my life show up when the doctor said that it wouldn't be no more. When, when financially I didn't know how I was going to make it when I was so just, just pressed in with depression and discouragement, how the Lord came in time and time and time again. I promise you, this isn't just a cute jerk story, but we've watched God over and over and over and over and over. So even in this moment, I just sing this over your life prophetically. This is somebody's going to minister straight to your heart. I never would have made it. But now I see you there for me. I never would have made it. Never would have made it without the Lord. Yeah, I would have lost it all. Yeah. But now I 
this little part says that I just want to say thank you Lord I just want to say thank you Lord cause you didn't have to be that good you didn't have to be that kind thank you Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, God. Hey, you kept me. You're keeping me. You're sustaining me. You're providing for me. You're making a way for me. You're making a way for me. You're making a way. You're making a way. Oh, I'm only here because of you. Oh, I'm only here because of you. Oh, I never would have. I never could have. I never would have. I never could have. Oh, I'm only here because of you. We never, we never, we never would have made it. We never could have made it. Whoa. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all could just keep going? Never would have made it without you. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that made a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind. Jesus. So when the woman obeyed what Elijah asked, she went back to her house and she followed his instructions. And when she did, there was food every single day for Elijah, for the woman, for her son, for the jar of flour was not used up. The jug of oil did not run dry. Her entire family lived off of the endless supply of God's provision in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. I want you to stand to your feet right now. I know you just sat down. Y'all thought we were done. We're going to worship just a little bit more and then we'll dismiss. But I just feel like the Holy Spirit is here wanting to minister to some people that have been in a dry, dry season. So Jesus, 
Jesus, how I trust you. How I rule you. Over and over. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus. Oh. come down to the altar if you want to if you need a miracle if you need provision if you need help right now if you just need the Holy Spirit to touch your heart if you just need to get right with God if you just need to surrender your burdens your cares your worries to the Lord precious Jesus
what the Lord can do. Who am I to deny what the Lord over time? Who am I? And who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Oh, yeah. Christ is my firm foundation. He won't fail you. He can't fail you. Ryan, is there anything you just want to speak over the people today before we finish? Yes. Anything on your yeah. heart? Yeah. So God has been faithful to everybody in this room. Whether you know it or not. Whether you've had history with him or not. You having breath in your lungs is his act of faithfulness as a father to you. We could go on and on and on and on so much more than just breath in our lungs. But I want to say this. Church in Tulsa, beautiful victory family. You have purpose. You have purpose. You have purpose. Maybe you say, bro, my purpose, I, I can't pick up the mic and go to the street corner and lift up worship. But you operate in business. You operate in the, in the medical space. You're in education. You're a stay-at-home mom. Whatever you do, there is a unique calling on your life to go into that sphere of influence and release the kingdom. And I'm just telling you, victory. There is a revival. We're already experiencing the first fruits of it in the nations. And I'm telling you, I really believe that this beautiful body is going to be a significant catalyst to the move of the Spirit, to the move of God in Tulsa like we've never seen. And as much as we love Pastor Paul, as much as we love the vision that God's put inside of him, I'm telling you, it takes everybody in this room fully mobilized. His responsibility is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So my brothers and my sisters, go out tomorrow on mission. Go out on the rest of the week on mission. I am telling you, if you step out, if you step out of your comfort zone, if you step out of your shell and you begin to do things that you've never done before, you'll see the move of the Spirit in ways that you've never seen Him move before. Tulsa, now's the time. Now's the hour. Don't wait on your neighbor. It's your turn to get fully engaged. How many of y'all receive that today? Lord, I just pray right now for every person here. God, as we leave, that we leave encouraged by the Holy Spirit. 
equipped by the Holy Spirit, ready, God, for this week. I pray, Lord, just for an anointing on every person in this room as they go home, as they go to work. God, as they encounter problems, circumstances, situations, that they encounter it with faith. They encounter it with a trust in you that you will come through, that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our protector. God, I pray, Lord, for your uncanny provision this week. Lord, that people would be surprised by the favor of God. Lord, they would be surprised by doors that you open. And Lord, that you would usher people into places that you do want them to release the kingdom of God into those people, into those places. Just pray this with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. You are my source. My hope is in you. I trust in you, Lord. I repent of my sin. I receive your forgiveness. You are my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, that you're not finished with me. My best days are in front of me. I will see the victory, and I will give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.